Good morning, Harbor. I didn't hear anything. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Happy Palm Sunday. And please go ahead and welcome our acolytes this morning. Please stand and welcome our acolytes and friends this morning. Let's give that entrance a round of applause to welcome our Palm Sunday. And let's go ahead and open in song together with blessed assurance. my 
Good morning again, Harbor. Happy Palm Sunday. Go ahead and say good morning and welcome to your neighbor. Let's come back and stay standing as we enter into our second song this morning, How Great Thou Art. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds my hands have made. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I got so caught up in the music, I forgot to put on my microphone and just thank you, praise band. Happy Palm Sunday. Good morning and welcome again. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. And in the Gospel of John, it tells us that the crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he finally entered Jerusalem. They were singing and shouting with confidence. After describing the crowd, however, the gospel zooms in on the disciples and tells us that the crowds, the disciples were confused at these crowds. The text says the disciples did not understand what was happening. A lot of our lives may look like that. Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade, missing our chance to sing. That is why we need our prayer of confession, because our life happens fast. And without a doubt, we have stood where the disciples have stood. So let us pray, for we don't want to miss our chance to sing. I realize I totally skipped our call to worship, but we will start with our call to worship, and then I'll have you join me in our prayer to confession. If you'll please join me in the bolded words. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised. Amen. I'm going to have you join me in our prayer to confession. I apologize for going a little out of order there. <laughs> you can please join me in reading this together. Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall. Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could lead the parade, but instead find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us which songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead, and then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to invite our children and youth for a moment before Children's Church. I love the enthusiasm, Simone. I heard the yes. Cute sandals. Welcome, friends. How are we doing? We doing good? Welcome. I'll wait for the rest of us to gather. Got a big group this morning. We have a little space on this side in case anyone needs it. Welcome. Thank you for those of you who helped us bring in our palms. That was kind of fun and different. Did we enjoy that? Was it fun waving the little palm branch around a little bit? Did anyone accidentally smack someone <laughs> coming up the row? No? No injuries? Everyone safe? Okay. You didn't do it. Okay. Azalea said she did not hit anybody. <laughs> you carried the light in. And so today, obviously, we're celebrating a special day. It's already been mentioned a couple times. Anyone know what today is, that, what we call today? Angelina. Palm Sunday, yes, you're seeing lots of palms, lots of green, and then after church, we're having our spring brunch, which is a time to celebrate this time of spring and this Easter time as well. Next week, we finally arrive at Easter, which in children's church, we talk about all the Sundays, all the purple Sundays that it takes to get there. Sometimes we have a big thing we're getting ready for. Maybe it's graduation. That's a big deal. Maybe it's our driving test. Maybe it's the next grade. Maybe it's becoming a sibling. These big things that we have in our life, and it takes a while to get to them. How do we feel when we finally achieve these things that we've worked on or been waiting for? What are some of the feelings we might have? 
Anyone have a thought? What does it feel like to accomplish something or complete something? Anyone? Hmm? Proud. You might be proud that you're, first of all, probably a little happy that you're just done with it, right? Because sometimes it could take a really long time. You're doing a lot of studying for this final or this midterm, or you have this big class project that you're working on, and maybe you might be a little happy that it's just done. You might also then be proud of yourself, that you got there, that you took the time to learn, to study, to prep, or even just to wait patiently. That's something to be proud of. And so this week in Children's Church, we're going to hear the story of Palm Sunday, of when Jesus finally arrived into Jerusalem, which was a long journey. It's taken us five Sundays. Today's the sixth Sunday. And there's this big moment of completion, of arrival. But we also know that the story doesn't end with Jesus getting to Jerusalem, right? It's not like, okay, I'm done. I'm on vacation. I'm going to find a resort now. No. It only gets a little trickier for the next week, at least, right? There's a lot of things that come up in this next week between this Sunday, this grand entry, this big moment that is visible and that others can see and be a part of. But then there's a lot that Jesus goes through internally for the next week before the next big thing that happens. We have our Maundy Thursday service this week in person and online, which we know is not always a super happy service, right? We can hold and sit with some of those feelings of unease or discomfort or just sadness because that's part of life. But then we know that there is something bigger that happens in the end. And so as we prep this whole week, I want you to think about those secret special, quiet times that Jesus might have had. Just had this big entrance. He has the pressure of people thinking that he's the big thing. He's this big deal. He has to do something massive. That's a lot of pressure. Has anyone felt that type of pressure before? Like, oh, dang, now I need to perform. Yeah, it's a big deal. So let's think about that this week. Let's think about what that might have felt like to have that pressure to have everyone looking at you, expecting you to do something big. And then as we head into children's church in a moment, I want you to think about what this felt like, this big entrance, this arrival, and then what is upcoming next. Are we ready for children's church? Yes, let's worship. I can't remember who we have this morning. Have someone for mission moment this morning. Judy, I'll call you up, Judy. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Happy uh, spring. Isn't it nice? So I wanted to talk a little bit about five of the best gifts that I ever received in my life, okay? And I have a little show and tell here. Um, the first gift is this book from my sister, where you fill in the blanks about the person. For example, number 14, it says, you're awesome at, and she wrote, giving sympathy to those who deserve it. So this whole book really shows me that she knows me and understands me and that she, she loves me. So this is one of my most treasured things. Um, gift number two is from my husband, and uh, he surprised me with this ring. Um, we had just finalized the adoption of our daughter, and it was a very difficult and arduous process to adopt her. And it was kind of a symbol of, we've come down this road, and here we are, and we're starting our journey as a family of five. And if you know my husband, he hates to go shopping and he hates to spend money. So, so I knew this was really from his, from his heart. Um, gift number three is from my father. Here's a picture of him. And my father had to work three jobs when we were little just to keep food on the table. During the day, he was a policeman. And at night, he was a musician six nights a week. He worked in a swing band. And then he used to take um, odd jobs as, as he could here and there, just to keep food on the table. So he didn't have a lot of time in his schedule. 
but every minute he had, he spent with us kids to show us that he really loved us and he really valued our time. And, and I think about that, it still makes me feel, you know, appreciated and loved, okay? Gift number four, I don't have, but it is a note from my high school teacher. She wrote a note on one of my papers that was so encouraging to me that it really thought made me reconsider my career direction. And I went into a whole different career direction because of this one note that a teacher wrote. Something so simple, right? And the fifth gift is not from a person, it's from my dog, okay? Um, Gary and I, when I retired in July, decided we're not gonna adopt another dog, we wanna travel, we're not gonna do it, and we made it until about two months ago, and then we adopted a dog. <laughs> okay. So she's a great Dane, and she's very tall. And when I get home every time, she's so happy to see us that she puts her big paws right here, and she gives me a hug. And I know it's because she just loves me so much, she's so happy to see me. So those are the five gifts. And yes, they're a lot different, but they're also a lot alike, okay? The first way that they're alike is that they are very personal. They were literally meant for me and nobody else, okay? And the second gift is that their value is much greater than money. They're, they're not monetary, they're all about love. And when I think about those gifts, I think that's the way that God wants us to be when we're giving to him. He wants it to be personal, not a monetary transaction, but a way to show love. We should feel joy at giving because of all that we've been, you know, given from him. And I think, um, obviously, there are many other gifts than money. There are a lot of gifts of your time and your efforts. Um, there is a lot of gifts that people in this church give that the nice thing about them is that we all get to share them. Like the music team, when they share their gifts every week, doesn't it make you feel great that these talented people are, are giving their gifts and we all get to share that? Um, during Bible study, people share a lot of their personal stories and they really open up. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the chance to get to know them a little bit better. And um, when people do mission moments and they share their stories, I get to know them a little bit, and I appreciate the bravery it takes to stand here and do this, okay? Um, and there's lots of people who do things behind the scenes, people that I didn't even know do things that I'm really impressed with, that, that there's so much that it takes to keep this church going. Today's brunch is a perfect example of that, right? All the things that people did to make such a beautiful brunch. So I guess when you think about giving, please think about how you can show your joy and what you've been given to the Lord. So um, you can donate, I think it's supposed to be up on the screen, but you can donate either online or you can walk to the back and you can put your money in the little plates back there. Thanks. Right, would you pray with me now for a moment? Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to show you our love and our express our joy through our various gifts. Please use these gifts and put them to good use to glorify you. Amen. Thank you, Judy. That was lovely. And it's a good time to remind you all that if you would like to give a little mission moment in church, we have a sign-up sheet on the table behind the couch over here. We'd love to hear your reflections on what it is to give and be part of community. So thank you, Judy. That was beautiful. Now we're going to spend some time together in prayer. And I want to remind us that when we start this moment of prayer as a community, it's a powerful moment in your week, in your day, where all the words spoken are a prayer. I can't possibly remember all the things you all share each week. Sometimes we share quite a bit. And so when you start speaking, it's a prayer. And it's a prayer that you've invited community into. And so I'd just like to ask if there's anyone here who has a prayer that they would like to invite the community into this morning. 
Elaine. Pray for Macy and the loss of her father. Yeah. I was going to announce that one, but yes, we heard yesterday um, that very suddenly Macy's father went down for a nap and did not wake up. So he went in peace, which is a blessing. But as you can imagine, yeah, Macy and Eric are not here today. Um, they're with family. I, I believe in Lake Arrowhead is where the, the family lives. Um, and just kind of really in grief. So let's be in prayer for Macy and for Eric, who will be supporting her through this. Um, as you can see, they're not here. We're missing Macy and her presence and Eric up in the box. And Ryan, thank you for filling in. Yeah, it's, I knew it did. It's, <laughs> it's a lot more complicated. Um, Justin and Eric and Lauren together run tech that we should really have like four people doing it. So when we're down one person, it's, it's a challenge. But um, thank you to everyone who filled in. And just please be in prayer. It's a hard thing. Macy's still pretty young to lose a parent. Um, it's always too soon to lose a parent, but she's very young. So just be in prayer for her this week. It's okay to reach out. Um, her father and family are private and did not want a prayer request to go out to the whole community, but did want it shared that please be in prayer. And if you have her phone number and you want to just send a message, don't expect a response, but just know that that would probably be very meaningful to her and to Eric right now. So, yes. Paula, did you have something you wanted to share? Well, I have a, a praise in that. A little closer. We want to hear uh, you. There you go. <laughs> the worship team, their two songs this morning just blessed my heart. They're just my favorites, and I thank them. They're so terrific. I just, I just love them. Amen. Yeah. And my baby Enzo is sick. He's mm -hmm. had pink eye, and he's got a cold, and oh, my poor little guy. Yeah. We will be in prayer Pray for, for Enzo. His mom and dad because yeah. they're going nuts. <laughs> it's hard to have a sick baby. <laughs> it's not easy. We'll be praying for Enzo. And thank you also to the praise team. I Don't they do a nice job of blending together new music and then every once in a while bringing in the old hymns that we love so much. So thank you. Other prayers that we'd like to lift up this morning, prayers of concern, prayers of praise, whatever's on your heart. Lindsay, you pass that down there. Um, so several months ago, um, I shared a prayer request about a good friend that was um, struggling with depression. And um, I just, I've seen her the past couple weeks, and she's made a really big shift. And I don't even totally know details about it, but yeah, she's talking different. And it's just, healing is happening, and recovery is happening, mm -hmm. and it's, it, she can't believe it, and I kind of can't believe it, and it's really encouraging and exciting. So Amen. it's just, yeah, it's exciting. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Lindsay. I remember you sharing a few months back. Um, sometimes we have to go through those heavy, hard seasons, and we come out changed and different, and I'm so glad that's what's happening with your friend. Are there others who would like to share this morning a prayer on your heart? Caroline. Um, the Cleaver family and my family are going to start looking for a house Yay! <laughs> to buy that would be ours. Wow. And it's scary and exciting. And exciting. <laughs> Yay. Amen. All right. If anyone knows... If anyone knows of a home that needs to be purchased, um, let them know. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Anyone else? Lauren? I think it's Caroline's birthday today. It is. So I want to say a blessing for that. It is. It is. And you know what? We decided we're going to add birthdays to the end of children's moment, and we forgot to do it this morning. So happy birthday, Caroline. Are we, do we have any other birthdays that we missed last week or this, this week? Rain's birthday is is it today? The other day. Happy birthday, Rain! Um, we are going to start that up. I, we just forgot this morning, so we had a bunch of other palms waving, so didn't end up getting to that one. But happy birthday, Caroline! Thanks for spending your birthday with us. Anyone else have a prayer they'd like to lift up this morning? 
Okay, I have a couple. Um, I shared them last week, but I want us to keep praying. One of my best friends in the world, her father has lung cancer. It's stage three, and she's going through a lot with this, and obviously so is he, so if you could keep her family in prayers. His name is Alan. My dear cousin Emily was just diagnosed. She's younger than me, 43, I think, and she um, has breast cancer. Still don't know the details of what kind or how aggressive or any of that. She's still kind of in the limbo phase. And um, I appreciate all your prayers. She's just kind of devastated at the moment, not really communicating with anyone or speaking with anyone. But if you could all just keep her in prayer. And then my brother's childhood friend, also named Alan, with um, colon cancer, we got some good news that it's not quite as advanced as they had thought still very serious, still a problem, but um, he was feeling a little encouraged. So if you could continue in prayer for those three, I would much appreciate it. Are there any other prayers? Anyone on Zoom like to lift up a prayer this morning? We'll wait a moment. We can hear you, Margretta. Thank you, Margretta. We'll be praying for you. Please be in prayer for her on your own and for just her rest and her wellness. Thank you, Margretta. Any other prayers on Zoom? Okay. Let's take a moment together. We're going to breathe together this morning, and then we'll go into a space of prayer. So just find a comfortable position for your body and open your chest up a little bit. Um, Plant your feet on the ground and take a few deep breaths into your lungs and feel the air drop down into your belly. And just take a few breaths together as deep as you can. Push that air down into your pelvic floor and just remind yourself of how expansive you are and how much room you have for the breath of life to fill you. Two more big breaths. One more. Beautiful God, we come together this morning as a community. Some of us have planted ourselves here for many, many years, many generations. And others maybe have just walked through the door. We give thanks for all of it, for each one, for each path and each journey that has led each person here. God, we know that your son Jesus calls us to community. That is, in fact, how we find our salvation, with one another, tending to each other, loving each other, nurturing each other, and remembering the one who showed us how to love each other, your son, Jesus. And so this morning, we just give thanks. We give thanks for the walk that he is on in this Lenten season. We give thanks for this walk to the cross that shows us who he was, what he stood for, and his uncompromising spirit. And we're filled with awe. We're filled also with confusion. And we're filled with a deep knowing that we are held. And so, God, you've heard the prayers that were lifted today, prayers for individuals, some who've been trapped in depression and have found a little pathway, a shift, a tearing in the veil that has allowed a new reality to pour in, and we give so much thanks for that. Others are struggling with health, We pray for peace, we pray for rest, we pray for Sabbath for the body, for the mind and the spirit. We pray that healing floods them and holds them, nurtures them. We've heard today, God, from many people, some who are tired, some who are filled with energy. And we know, God, that within the space of community, there is something for each one. And we give thanks. And so today on this Palm Sunday, as we remember this joyful moment 
in the walk of Jesus, where he was seen by the crowds, known. We celebrate that, but we celebrate it, God, knowing that that is not the end of the story. There's a hard walk still to come. There's pain, there's grief. And then at the end of that, another rebirth, another resurrection. And so, God, we submit to the way it is, to the cycles of life that nature shows us, to the time for rest and the time for movement. We submit to that because we love you, we want to walk with you, and we know, God, that submission is far deeper than doing as we're told. It's actually about understanding the way of the world and walking with it instead of fighting against it. And so, God, today we ask for that, that peace that fills us and reminds us what it is to walk in your way. We lift up the prayers that were spoken today. We lift up the prayers that are still held in our hearts, knowing that you're working already in our lives for peace, for rest, for kindness and love. And it's in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that we pray. Amen. Please remain seated. Do we have our reader today? Is it you, Caroline? Good morning. All right. Courage. We summon every ounce of courage. We give ourselves pep talks and we call our friends. We dig deep within. We practice the words out loud, rolling them around in our mouths, imagining the response. We deal out every what if card our brain holds on to and spend absurd amounts of time imagining all the ways it could go wrong. And then finally, blessedly, we say it. I love you. To speak the truth of your heart takes courage. It always has. But please, summon your courage. Join the parade and speak with conviction for God has been saying to the world since day one, I love you. What is your response? Please sit during this time in meditation on the words you just heard, the poem Courage. Sing with us or lift up silent prayers. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Though the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. 
Thank you. I have been told that it, that is one of the birthday girl's favorite songs. <laughs> All right. Okay, so before we jump into our new 
work today, I'm wondering if anyone did their homework from the last two weeks. <laughs> I know some of you did because I talked with some of you about it this week, which was lovely. Our homework was first to share with someone what you see in them, the wholeness of them, right? To say, this is who you are to me. And then the second bit of homework was to consider where in your life forgiveness is needed. Anyone want to share? Anyone? It's okay if we don't, just giving a space, because we've been working on these things. All right. That's still our homework, so keep it up if you haven't yet done one of those two things. So Palm Sunday, it's a fun day for us, right? Palms and children and spring brunches, it's a joy and such a gift. I hope you enjoyed watching our children. We actually have enough children now to have a processional, so that was fun. We're about to have a spring brunch. Thank you to Heather for all of her organization on that. And yet today, before that joy, we're going to take a few moments to really bring ourselves into the story for today and to imagine what it, have been, what it would have been like so long ago. But first, I want to set the scene before the scripture of today, because there's a few important things, and Jesus has been making some good trouble, is what I'll call it. You see, Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. And that has created quite a stir. In this scene that comes before the Palm Sunday triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Jesus is overcome with grief as he stands at Lazarus's tomb with many of Lazarus' friends and his family, his sisters. And in that scene, Jesus also weeps at the loss and I don't know why, but that idea of Jesus weeping at our pain comforts me. And so there he was with Mary and Martha and some other gathered people. And he felt their pain and he expressed it. Have you guys ever been in a space where it wasn't your grief that you were feeling? Maybe you accompanied someone to a memorial service. And yet, even though you personally don't know the person who's being memorialized, something within you feels that grief coming up. That's how I imagine this moment with Lazarus, where Jesus felt it, and it moved him. And so he decided, all right, this is a moment. And he um, asked them to roll the stone away from the tomb. This should sound familiar to us. And he said, Lazarus, come out. Well, word spread to the religious authorities, and so begins the plot to kill Jesus. In our own world, we have religious authorities who like to make a lot of rules on things. And when someone comes into the community who does things differently, they're not happy, right? That's what Jesus was doing. He was stirring up his dearly beloved brethren to remind them, what's the point? Why are we here? And some people get lost in the rules, don't they? And they forget the point of being here. We also get to experience before our story today the power of anointing. Jesus allows Mary, Martha's sister, and Lazarus's sister to anoint his tired feet with nard that smells a lot like lavender. The whole house is filled with the fragrance, Scripture tells us. What an extravagant gift of pure love. She pours the oil on his feet and then uses her own hair to rub it in. And finally... Before our scripture today, we learn that there is truly a plot to kill not only Jesus, but also Lazarus, because this miracle had to be dampened. So that's what leads up to our scripture for today. I'm going to now read the scripture, which is the story in John of the Palm Sunday procession. You can find it in John chapter 12. Verse 12 is where I'll start. 
The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. I want us to spend some time today really getting into the story of Palm Sunday, so I've written a little meditation that I'm going to lead us on. So if you all would just take a moment, get comfortable, and close your eyes. We're going to travel back in time and experience this day from the perspective that would have been a little more realistic. So I want you just to listen to my voice as it helps you to create your own picture, reminding yourself that your picture is going to be different from everyone else in this room. So take a few deep breaths to relax into your imagination. And now you're there in the crowd. Place yourself. Where are you? Are you close to the gates of the city? Or are you farther back? Maybe you're feeling afraid to jump into the middle of a noisy and rambunctious crowd. Maybe the sun is hot. It's beating down on your back and you're sweating. You turn toward it looking high in the sky and it blinds your eyes for a moment until you look away. What do you see? There's a crowd, and it's growing. How is the crowd behaving? Do you want to join them? Are you nervous, anxious? What do you hear? People are talking about the one who is coming. He's a teacher. No, he's a healer. No, he performs miracles. No, he's just a carpenter's son. Look at him all puffed up and full of himself. No, he's a troublemaker. He breaks the rules. But some people seem to love him. Others maybe hate him. And still others don't know what to think, but they are there. Lured by the crowd, all the excitement. Who is this man? And why is everyone gathering to see his entrance into the city? And then there's a kind of growing murmur in the crowd. Something is happening. You stand as tall as you can to see over the people in front of you. Something is coming. And you can't help but gasp with excitement. But as you pull the air into your lungs, you choke on the dust that the crowd is stirring up, and it's hot, getting hotter as the crowd bears down on you. People are everywhere, and you can't move anymore. So you give in, and you stretch your neck to see just a glimpse. And there it is, a man riding a donkey that is just too small for him. His feet are dragging against the ground, Neither he nor the amazingly resolute little donkey seem to matter much. He's just waving at people as though they are his dear friends. And his wave and his gaze are that kind of gentle acknowledgement that's not overdone because it's confident in the kindness that it shares. There's no fear in this man. And you wonder, how can this be so? as you feel pushed and pulled by the crowd that is surrounding him. And the donkey stumbles a bit, and you smile as you notice that she's tripped on someone's cloak. The crowd is throwing their cloaks at the feet of this sweet little donkey. 
and you doubt she's ever received this kind of reception. As you stand in amazement of this spectacle, one of those wildly waving palms slaps you across the face. It hurts a bit, but your anger fizzles when you notice how excited the child who struck you with it is. And then the murmur of the crowd rises. You've been told to fear these kinds of crowds before. You've been warned by authorities never to gather in crowds. That's what the sinners do. And now you hear this murmur and your old fears return. What is happening? Are you safe? Should you run? You can't move. The fear is real. And then you hear it. It gets louder and louder until you hear your very own voice shouting it with joy and with conviction. Maybe a conviction you've never felt before. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. What does this even mean? Why are you shouting it? And who is this man? So just to stay quiet for a moment, and in your heart, I want you to answer that question. Who is this man? Who is he? And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, take a deep breath, and come back. Sometimes we feel confusion and uncertainty in the moment. And then our lives go on and we're able to look backward with that hindsight view and see just exactly how the Spirit was moving us. Have you ever had that experience? You have no idea what's going on in the moment. But then a month later, a year later, a week later, oh, I needed that hard experience in order to prepare me for this one. And I want to be clear that God isn't around zapping you with hard experiences. This is where that idea of submission comes in. There's a world, a physical reality, that follows rules, the natural laws. Things are born, things grow, things die. This happens in the world, and we submit to that knowing, and it actually gives us confidence Let's think about all the things we do in our world to stop us from growing old, to stop the things that will happen. How much money and energy and time do we put into feeling young forever when the natural law is things are born, things grow, they age, and ultimately they die. This is the way. And we see this in our scripture today, this confusion and uncertainty that the disciples must have in this moment of why? Why must you die? Why must you take this walk, Jesus? I don't understand. And so today, we're going to spend some time discussing a couple of questions. So if you could pull those questions up. Um, I kind of just did one grouping Here we go. I'm going to have to turn around. Um, One big grouping and then one smaller one. We're going to be talking about when you have gone through a confusing and uncertain season, have you ever found clarity by looking back on that time with a new perspective? What allowed you to understand in hindsight? What did you realize? What did you remember? And then the other smaller question that actually might be the bigger question What's the difference between confusion and awe, and can they coexist? So in our scripture today, we're seeing the disciples come into this moment of confusion while this parade is occurring. What does this all mean? I don't understand. And we get that lovely little bit at the end that when Jesus is glorified, then they remembered that moment of hindsight. At the end, I looked back and saw. That's happening in our scripture today. And the other thing that's happening is confusion in the crowd and awe at what's happening. I want to remind us before we go into our discussion groups that Jesus's entry into Jerusalem was an 
absolute defiant act because at the other side of Jerusalem in that same time frame was entering Caesar with his whole military brigade. And here Jesus is making a mockery of kingship and this idea of the occupying forces by sitting on a donkey and having the crowds wave palm branches and throw cloaks. It was an incredibly courageous act on his part. And for those who are new, we talk about this each year. I just want to make sure we're all understanding that Jesus, in mocking that military and political display, is tearing a veil in reality and creating a moment for something new to come in. And that is what we see happening in our scripture today. So keep that in mind as you discuss. I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. And remember, we have some new people here today. So let's make sure that we include them in our discussion. And I will call you back in 10 minutes. Are we ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, there we go. All right, let's finish our share and start coming back. Who would like to share what their group had to say about awe and confusion or hindsight view? Nan's going to start. Well, this, this was, we all had a share of the first one, but mine was about our church a few years ago when we had to make a lot of really big decisions. And I was very nervous about it, very <laughs> anxious about it. I knew it was right, but I still was anxious. And now I look back and I think, I should not have been anxious about that because it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Oh, I love hearing that, Nan. Sometimes, though, anxiety is our teacher, right? So sometimes we learn a lot from those moments of anxiety. And um, I frankly think you did a beautiful job. Thank you. Anyone else want to share their conversation this morning? Anybody? I know that Shelby's going to say something. Are you ready, Shelby? Yeah? Okay. And then maybe at least one other can share before we move to Zoom. So we talked about with nature, you can really appreciate it and be in awe and wonder of it without being confused by it. But when there's an aspect of like not understanding it or like having this ungraspable part of it, it almost adds the appreciation and awe of it. Wow. Thank you. I love that. You guys always have great conversations back here. They really do. I know they chat a little, but they're saying really amazing things. Thank you, Shelby. Anyone else have something to share in the room? How about Zoom? Do we have a Zoom share? Are you sharing for Zoom? <laughs> um, Suhei got on and she uh, we haven't seen her in a while Hi, she has some great insight about confusion and awe and she was talking about how she's been you know spending her life like a lot of us like looking for spirituality looking for faith looking for answers and and she's had a lot of experiences across different faiths and how much there is in common across all the faiths and instead of focusing on the commonalities, we focus on the differences and fight to the death about the little tiny differences instead of embracing the commonalities across the face. And I, I love that confusion versus all peace because I think a lot of the confusion is frankly intentional to bring us apart from our commonalities. So I thought I wanted to share that. Interesting, beautiful Suhei. I'm glad you were on today joining us. We've missed you. Any last shares here? Anyone over here? Okay. All right. Well, those were good. To close this up today, I wanted to say that this jovial and triumphant entry that we see in Scripture, as I shared before, also makes a mockery of Caesar's entry at the other gate. Right? Sometimes our joy... An authentic awe can actually make a mockery of the things in the world that need to crumble, right? Like unilateral power, authoritarianism. These are things need to crumble. How do they crumble? 
we laugh at them. <laughs> we laugh at them. We stop fighting them, and we just laugh at them, and we do a new thing. And that's what Jesus was showing here. This donkey ride reveals Jesus as the man of courage, but also of peace. He's coming in on a donkey, not surrounded by a military brigade, not needing all kinds of people to protect him. He's in joy. He's in authenticity. This moment of celebration pumps hope and joy into an occupied people. We have occupation still happening in the world today. Think of the courage that it would take in the spaces in our world that are suffering under occupation to see this happen. And it is happening. There are lots of Jesus people in all different kinds of religions because Christianity does not have the market on it who are making a mockery of authoritarianism, of unilateral control, they're making a mockery of it, and it will crumble at some point. Unfortunately, lots of violence happens before. This moment for Jesus marks him. He now has an actual target on his back. And yet, he moves slowly and with grace and courage. He knows he's a marked man, but he's going to do what he's going to do. He's going to move through the world. As he moves through the world, he is not in a rush. He is simply on his path. And nothing, including incredible violence, will deter him from this path. Not all in the crowd knew all the details of what had transpired or of what was to come. Some in the crowd just got caught up and shouted because the others were shouting. But some were disciples who had watched their friend make miracles, who had been seen by their friend, who had been loved. And one in the crowd was Peter. And we've been spending a lot of time this season with Peter. Peter the rock, Peter the stumbling block. Remember when Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. You will not be a stumbling block to what my path is. Peter, the water walker. Remember how he walked on water for just a few moments? Peter, the one who sank and then cried out. I wonder what Palm Sunday felt like for Peter. And this last part of our scripture says, when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered. Isn't that how it goes? It takes the hindsight view to understand all the intricacies of our lives. We saw Peter rebuke Jesus for saying his time was short. Peter said, no, it can't be. This can't happen to you. And now I wonder if Peter is beginning to see on that Palm Sunday so long ago, see who his beloved friend and teacher really is, the courage in Jesus, a man who walks with courage, unwilling to compromise his own dignity or the dignity of even the least of these. That's who Jesus was. He walked through the world uncompromising. All of you are beloved, and so am I. That's what Jesus knew. A man who knows that no matter what trials and tribulations lie ahead, he is held in the love of God. So there is nothing to fear. Whew. That's quite a walk, isn't it? I'm not there yet. I don't know that any of us are. But that's why he came this human walk to show us what it looks like to be uncompromising. He was a man who lived the gospel that we read. He lived it. A man whose presence brought miracles of all kinds. The big and unbelievable healings and the small moments of seeing that can actually save the life of a hurting person. Those are miracles too. Sometimes it takes being at the end of the story to look back and really see the layered meanings, the depth of love and friendship, the fulfillment of prophecy, 
the pain and the hope. And as I call the praise team forward this morning, let's not forget to look back at our own lives and reflect. This is how we slow down and create meaning in our lives. This is how we learn to walk with Jesus. He's inviting us, he's encouraging us, and he's already walking. He's already doing it. He's walking on the shoreline as he preaches and teaches. He's walking on the dusty road, moving from one town to another. And he's walking to the tables, all those tables that he sat at. And he's walking on the water. There's nothing that stops Jesus from walking. He walks with the lepers, and he walks with the tax collectors. And heaven forbid, he walks with the women and with the children too. He's already walking with the gentle kindness, inviting you, me, all of us. And he's saying, come, walk with me, friend. What are you waiting for? Please join us in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Thank you. Will y'all join me in the affirmation of faith? You will read the bolded lines. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth. 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 So even today, we will sing songs about his grace. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Now I would like to invite Gary to read our invitation to the table. We gather around a lot of tables in this world, and each of them has a different hold on us. At the lunch table, we see our friends, but we also may see our insecurity. At the conference table, we may dream big dreams, but we may also see the competition or fear. At the family table, we see love and laughter and conversation, but we may also see seats that are empty. are here the silence that feels lonely. We gather around a lot of tables in this world, but there are none like this one. Here at this table, we bring the differences, the different pieces of ourselves, and the dreams, our joy, our fear, our insecurity, our pain, and our hurt, and they will be welcomed. Here at this table, we show up hungry, and we are always lead fed. Here at this table, we are met by a God who says, come in, come in, the food is ready, the table is set. This chair has your name on it. We've been waiting just for you. Friends, there are a lot of tables in this world, but there's none like this one. We have a seat saved for you. Come. Thank you, Gary. So tables, on Thursday this week, we'll commemorate that Last Supper where Jesus gathered around the table for the last time with his friends. And I hope we can feel the heart wrench in that. We hear that line of those empty spaces at the table. I want us to just remember what it must have felt like to be the beloved disciples of this amazing person who is changing your life and changing the world and to lose him to have him and to lose him, the grief of all of that. And we don't focus on the grief all the time. That's one of the, I would call, shortcomings of a lot of Christian gatherings. We want to jump to the resurrection moment, and we want to forget the hurt and the pain and the darkness and the shadow and that overwhelming feeling of grief. How many of you would just take the grief? It's too hard. It weighs too much. It pulls me down too much. And yet, in sitting in that grief, in remembering the dearly beloved that gathered around Jesus, we find our healing. We find the answers to pain and suffering in the world. So I want us this week, as we spend some time in joy, knowing that the joyful moments are going to end in suffering. I want us to just remember that meal that Jesus had before his last walk, the last walk to the cross, and how he must have fixed in his mind the faces of the ones he truly loved, like all of you have done. When you know you've got a hard thing coming up, you remember your child's face, your mother's face, your spouse's face, to help you get through your hard thing. And know that those are the faces that Jesus saw in his walk to the cross, the faces in the crowd, the ones who held him in his suffering, right? And I want you to think of when have you been held in your suffering? We don't want to stay there forever, but those are beautiful moments to know that we're held. And so this morning, I'm going to invite you now forward to collect your communion from Gary. And as you come forward, I just want you to reflect on that table, that grief, everything that was present, the fullness of time that was present in that moment. I want you to wonder did they know that thousands of years from now, people were going to be sitting around a table remembering this, remembering this moment in our lives? And just let it open for you. Let the deep layers of this story open for you as you come forward and collect your communion.
And so on that night, Jesus gathered with his dearly beloved friends in a room, and he took the simple bread, and he broke it and said, this is my body. Every time you eat it, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave thanks, and he poured it out, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Things are going to change. There's a new thing happening in the world. And he poured it out as though it was forgiveness. Let's take our grape and remember that forgiveness that's here for each one of us. Now will you please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I'm not going to forget it today. (laughs) We have announcements. Um, I always forget announcements. Okay, so we've got all of our groups meeting this week. Um, I hope you'll join one of those Bible study, women's or men's group, or praise band. We also have high school youth group, but we're having our potluck today. So that's what that will be. And there is our reminder. Thank you to all of you who set up and decorated and Salim's is waiting for us. We will be joining them shortly for our spring brunch after service. And what else do we have? Oh, this is exciting. So Gabriella Earnhardt has volunteered next Sunday and the following Sunday to take family and individual pictures for anyone who would like to have their photo taken. So please come next week for Easter in whatever you want to be in for your picture with Gabriella. They're going to make a lovely display somewhere so that new people can get to know us by looking at pictures and seeing names. Um, We've been having a lot more new people coming in, so we want to make sure everyone gets to eventually know everybody's name. So that will be happening next week. And we're really excited. We have baptisms happening. Ian is going to be baptized on Easter Sunday next week. Um, So that will be a really special service that we're all very excited about. And then we also have on April 28th, if there's anyone else who would like to be baptized, um, we have another option where Rhoda's son, Tyler, will be joining us and be baptized on that day. There will also be a little reception afterwards that Rhoda's family is putting on. And safety training, Sunday, April 7th. Some of you came for our CPR training. It was a lot of fun and also very informative. We're having part two of that that will be on April 7th after, after service, where we're going to be learning some safety things around campus, but also um, getting a little bit of uh, understanding of how to use nar- um, Narcan if there was an overdose with someone, and also um, our new AED machine. So those are some of the focuses. There will be some other things, but um, I hope you can join us for that as well. Also, on Sunday 21st, we, April 21st, we have our annual blessing of the bikes. Um, That's going to be a fun Sunday. We're going to have a guest preacher. Our bookkeeper, who's actually a Taoist priest, is going to be coming and offering a word to us during Sunday um, preaching moment on that day as well. So it will kind of be a fun day. I hope you'll all come and then stay after for our uh, blessing of the bikes, which will be at two o'clock. And I, did I have another? No. Oh, last thing I'm wanting to remind you all of is sign up sheets behind the couch. If you want to participate in worship and preparation, please look at it and see if you can sign your name up for a particular date upcoming. Okay, that's it. Please stand for our closing hymn. peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with god our creator children all are we let a 
us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in Right. And will you all join me in our benediction? Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within, saying, take heart, it is I be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. Go in peace, go trusting that good news. Amen. Thank you so much. My prayer for you this week is that you'll continue to engage your homework, helping the people in your life actually know what you see in them, and also asking where in your life is there a need for forgiveness. Alleluia and amen.